Electricity storage systems are the set of methods and technologies used to store electricity. The need for electricity storage is due to an imbalance in supply and demand on the electrical grid due primarily to an increase in renewable energy generation. These supply and demand discrepancies occur because renewables are intermittent, meaning electricity isn't produced when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, even though consumers still require electricity in these renewable downtimes. Currently, grids distribute electricity in real time meaning electricity is being consistently produced to meet consumer demand. This is why I am able to enjoy Beethoven's magnificent creations. Yet on the other hand, as a daughter of Holocaust survivor, I am unable to listen to the music, magnificent as it may be of composers who believe, for example, in the final solutions of the Jews. An artist that breaches this contract, that endangers the freedom and safety of member of society, regardless of the religion, fate, beliefs, or background, by a direct action, and this is very important, only by a direct action, should lose his place in society, together with a privileged platform, of which he presents his creativity and art. And along with this, the power, we attribute to it. Unless he regrets his action. Yes, apology can be accepted. Electricity storage gives grid operators the flexibility to use electricity that otherwise would be wasted. This grid flexibility is highly sought after and has the potential to transform how we produce and consume electricity, and is therefore being widely researched and tested. There are many different forms of electricity storage, the most common being battery, pumped hydro, compressed air, and flywheel. Currently, the largest challenges in implementing electricity storage at the grid scale are the cost and the infancy of the technology that's electricity storage. When human females are pregnant, they're advised to stay away from alcohol for fear of harming the fetus, and most parents refrain from giving their infants bottles full of whiskey or beer for obvious reasons. But if you're a fruit fly, literally dousing your offspring in alcohol is apparently one of the best ways to protect them from danger, particularly from certain types of wasps. How and why? Let's back up a bit. First, certain types of wasps prey on fruit flies by injecting eggs inside fruit fly larvae. Unless an infected larva kills the wasp egg, it hatches, and the wasp larva eats its way out from inside the fruit fly larva, killing it. One way for fruit fly moms to protect against this gruesome fate is to lay their eggs in an alcohol-soaked environment, such as fermenting fruit. Electricity is the physical flow of electrons, referred to as an electrical current. Electricity is an energy carrier that efficiently delivers the energy found in primary sources to end users, who in turn convert it into energy services. Electricity can be created in three main ways. The most common is through electromagnetic conversion, where electricity is generated by moving an electric conductor 
like wires. Inside magnetic field, the most practical example of this is a generator connected to a turbine. The turbine provides the motion required to move the conductor in the generator. This energy for motion can come from various technologies. For example, wind turbines, hydro, or the steam created from heat produced a nuclear fission or coal combustion. Electricity can also be created through a chemical reaction. An example of this is a battery or fuel cell. Finally, electricity can be created through solid state conversion, where electricity is generated using the structure and properties of a solid, especially constructed solid, consists of different molecules packed closely together to create an electric current. When stimulated, an example of a technology that utilizes solid state conversion is a solar PV cell. It is important to note that electricity is the same regardless of how it is produced. So, the electricity generated from an electromagnetic generator is the same as that from a battery. We appear to take it as a rule, or as a law of nature, that each species is adapted to the climate of its own home. For example, species from the Arctic, or even a temperate region, could not survive in a tropical climate, nor could a tropical species last long, if it found itself at the South Pole. But it is true to say there's too much emphasis, placed on the degree of adaptation of species, to the climates where they live. We assume that this adaptation, if all species are descended from a single form, must have taken place over millions of years. Yet a large number of plants and animals brought from different countries remain perfectly healthy in their new home. The word solstice means sun standing in Latin. It marks the point when the sun stops at its most northerly or southerly point relative to the equator. Before reversing direction, the summer solstice, the sun would appear at its highest point in the sky and is the day with the longest period of daylight. It happens twice a year, once in both the northern and southern hemispheres. The summer solstice in the northern hemisphere occurs around the 21st of June, but it does not always occur on this day, as it all depends on when. The sun reaches its northernmost point from the celestial equator. It can happen between the 20th to the 22nd of June. Around this time in areas north of the Arctic Circle, it is possible to witness the sun not set at all, so a dubbed land of the midnight sun for this very reason. This occurs because the Earth's rotational axis is tilted. The Earth rotates around an axis inclined at an angle of 23.5 degrees in relation to its orbital plane around the Sun. It is this tilt that gives us our seasons. Summer occurs in the hemisphere that is tilted towards the Sun, whilst winter falls on the hemisphere that is tilted away from the Sun. A sea breeze is an onshore breeze, which develops around the coastlines of sea and even large lakes on warm days. In mid-latitudes, it commonly occurs during the spring and summer. This is when there is a large temperature difference between the sea and adjacent land areas. A sea breeze is a thermally driven circulation, forming due to the fact that the land heats up more quickly than the sea.
temperatures aren't reached until early autumn, this differential heating of adjacent land and sea surfaces is the main factor in the formation of sea breezes. A temperature difference of around 3 degrees Celsius is required for sea breeze to start to develop. Other factors that are required for sea breezes to form are light offshore winds at around 3,000 feet. This aids the higher level flow out to sea to get the process started. The preservation of embryos and juveniles is a rate occurrence in the fossil record. The tiny, delicate skeletons are usually scattered by scavengers or destroyed by weathering before they can be fossilized. Ichthyosaurs had a higher chance of being preserved than did terrestrial creatures because, as marine animals, they tended to live in environments less subject to erosion. Still, their fossilization required a suite of factors, a slow rate of decay of soft tissues, little scavenging by other animals, a lack of swift currents and waves to jumble and carry away small bones, and fairly rapid burial. Given these factors, some areas have become a treasury of well-preserved ichthyosaur fossils. The deposits at Holzminden, Germany, present an interesting case for analysis. After World War II, European countries increased their efforts to live peacefully together on their small continent. To improve business and trade, six countries, Germany, France, Belgium, Italy, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, came together in 1958 to create a common economy and currency. These countries agreed not to use trade barriers like tariffs, embargoes, or quotas with each other. This led to a more prosperous economy in these countries. As the years went on, more European countries joined this group called the European Union, or EU for short. There are currently 21 countries in the EU after United Kingdom left, and there are other countries like Turkey that hope to join the EU. The EU worked to help create jobs in poor parts of Europe and pass laws to protect the environment. The group or union focused on the idea that all goods, services, people, and money should be able to move freely through the through the EU countries. Europeans no longer had to carry their passports when traveling between the EU countries. They could instead travel from country to country much like the people in the United States travel from state to state. 43. Sweetened condensed milk is a good ingredient for sweet recipes because of all the added sugar, about 25% by weight. But when sweetened condensed milk was invented in the 1800s, the original reason for adding sugar to the milk was not for flavor, but for protection against spoilage. And it works, even after you open the can. Sweetened condensed milk keeps longer than fresh milk. That added sugar kills bacteria that would otherwise digest the milk and spoil it. The sugar kills not by poisoning the bacteria, but by a more direct physical process. It draws water out of the bacteria so the bacterial cells shrivel and die. Each bacterial cell has a sort of skin, technically, a membrane. Water can pass through this membrane pretty easily, but substances dissolved in the water can't. Water has a natural tendency to move toward any region where there's a high concentration of dissolved substances. A bacterial cell in a can of sweetened condensed milk finds itself immersed in an extremely concentrated solution of sugar. Water inside the cell will, therefore, pass out through the cell membrane into the sugar solution.
English, as you have already read, is not a pure language. I don't think there really are any pure languages in the world, but English is definitely not a pure language. English, in fact, has borrowed from over 350 languages in its history. So, it's a variety of many languages. Some people say it's like a dog, a mongrel dog, a dog that has been made up of many different dogs. The English language is like that. By looking at the history of the English language, we learn about the history of the English people. The two things are closely connected. So, in fact today we are not only learning about language but we are learning about history. The fact that English has borrowed words from over 350 languages has been viewed differently throughout history. So, for example in Shakespeare's time people were very angry about words, which were not, they thought, original English words, words which came from other languages, they didn't like them. Steam is water that's heated to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Believe it or not, steam is invisible. You can see right through it. If you look closely at the end of your kettle spout, you'll notice that the white stuff doesn't start right away. It begins billowing about half an inch away from the nozzle, with clear gas in between. This clear gas is the actual steam. The billowy white stuff is what the steam turns into when it hits the drier, cooler air of your kitchen. Those white billows are, in fact, clouds, not steam. In many ways, they are identical to the clouds you can see in the sky. The white color comes from tiny liquid water droplets that have condensed from the steam. More accurately, these billows are a type of cloud, called a mixing cloud. But what are the dangers of keeping these drugs at home? There are a number of dangers. Parents should know that leftover drugs are dangerous because they may be accidentally ingested by children. Either adults don't keep the bottles properly closed and stored or because even many kids can sometimes open child-proof lids. Patients may use the drugs after their expiration date. The leftover drugs may be taken for the wrong reasons. For example, someone may have a viral infection and self-prescribe to leftover antimicrobial that was prescribed for a bacterial infection, but that drug will have no effect as the viral infections. Drugs that are left over might be given to or taken by someone else who may have a serious allergy to the medicine, and who for that reason would not be prescribed to medicine under the supervision of a physician. Finally, inappropriate use of drugs promotes drug resistance if the drug is taken for the wrong indication, the wrong duration, or in the wrong dosage. So various conclusions. Yes, bees are in decline. These declines are well documented. They are real and supported by good, strong scientific evidence, which is the only of these counts. The drivers of decline on many varied depending on species. The effects of pollinator loss could be absolutely huge. So, is it a catastrophe? Not yet, but it could be. On the positive side, we are aware of the problem. Awareness is being raised all the time and people are taking actions. Before fixing is missing, you can recognize the problem. At least it's been done. Today, we'll discuss about abstraction, 
commonly known as description. There are two methods of description. These are symbolic language and body language. The abstraction is an important part for developing a computer. This is originated from the symbolic system and the computer system. The origin of symbolic system was developed when people try to communicate with each other. The symbolic language took communication to wider people and popularity group. The other part of abstraction is the body language. People accepted body language as well. The physical movement facilitates the development of sign language, which popularly became hand words. These can form when two separate air masses with different temperatures and different amounts of water in them mix together. In the case of your kettle, the hot, steamy gas cools rapidly in the kitchen air, and this sudden coolness is what makes some of the vapor condense. Mixing clouds are pretty common, and they don't need to start with steam. You see mixing clouds when you see your breath on a cold winter day. You'll find them rising from a bowl of warm soup. Wherever there's a mixing cloud, you can bet some warm, Moist air is mixing with air that's cooler and drier.